Hi guys, it's uh, Saturday, April 18th, 2020. So let's talk about some of the <clears throat> major impacts that are going on currently. Um, I'm in New York. We're going to be shut down for who knows how long. Uh, under these new guidelines, it's going to be probably a couple of weeks before we even potentially can get to the the first phase. So um, currently we're shut down until May 15th. <clears throat> Stay at home orders are in place. If you go to any public areas, you have to have a mask on your face or something covering your face. They won't even let you in the store now. Um, our local Walmart, uh, they count the people that are allowed to go in the store. Um, everything's shut off except for the market area. It's the only place that you can go in. Um, so it's just craziness. So I tried to avoid going to the store at all, all costs. I wish I had my greenhouse in, but you know, we'll make do. So let's talk about these plant closures um, and the impacts that this is going to have. And with everything that's going on, this is important, and this isn't being covered in in lamestream media um, very much. So there have been plant closures, meat processing plant closures, all over the country over the past week or so. Um, let's talk about <clears throat> meat packing plants. Okay, so. These plants are stocked with workers who are on top of each other. So now the ones that are open have to readjust their operations so that people are not all crammed in together and they're separated, which slows down production because they can't do as much. And then those plants that are still open have to make up the slack from the plants that are closed, except for the fact that there's a certain amount of plant per type of meat. So you have a certain number of beef plants, you have a certain number of uh, pork plants, you have a certain number of poultry plants. So they all are separate entities that are doing their own thing, um, processing their own type of meat uh, for production to get to the grocery store, right? So when you shut down one, two, three, of each of these type of things, it makes the other plants who are already reduced in their workforce um, strained to try to make up the slack. So what that means essentially is we're going to see shortages. We've already seen them in the grocery stores. And if we're not seeing shortages, we're going to end up with higher prices, right? Because if you can't get what you need to get or process what you need to process and get it to the store, um, it's going to increase the prices or it's going to make it not available. Now they say um, each one of these types of processing facilities has cold storage, right? So they take a certain amount of the product that they produce and they put it into a freezer, um, a warehouse freezer, you know, something to that effect. And they're having to, to try to keep up with as best they can, what's needed in the grocery stores. They're deplenishing um, those cold storages. So, because they're trying to keep up with this, they are not able to produce enough to get it into cold storage. So we have the storage to be able to send it out. So all along the lines, we're seeing issues with this and it's not really a big deal um, in any type of media outlet or anything like that. They'll mention it here or there. Um, they'll say, oh, another plant closed in this state that had this many employees it's gonna cause a problem. Then they'll move on to everybody fighting over everything, which is all anybody does anymore. Um, 
you know, Democrats, Republicans, independents, um, now this whole thing with, with Mr. T-Man there, um, and the governors taking advantage of having the power, essentially, to do what they want in their state, and he put that on them, and instead of them being responsible, they're taking advantage, which we all saw that one was going to come, so we'll see what happens with that. It should be interesting. Um, so with the meat production, it's already reduced by 25%, okay? 25% reduction in processing. So one plant that processes cattle um, normally does it about 5,000 heads of cattle a day. So just in the two plants that I saw while I was researching that closed, that's 10,000 heads, okay? So let's also think about this. What about the ranchers? What about um, the farms? What about the, the swine, you know, commercial farms and the poultry commercial farms? What, what's happening to them? Because if they're not able to send their animals to be slaughtered for consumption because these plants are closed or because they have a reduced workforce and they can only take in so much, <clears throat> what's going to happen to all of those animals that need to be processed, right? So when you're in, a, in an industry like that, you spend your entire day making sure that these animals go along the line and get where they need to go um, for consumption because that's what you're in business for. If they can't send what they need to send, the animals are still there. They're already ready. But if you can't get them through the line to where they need to go, then what happens? Then your, your industry itself is overrun because you're used to sending 5,000 cattle a day to this packaging plant to be slaughtered and packaged and sent along the line to get to the grocery store. So it's disrupting all of it. Now, some of these industries are sending their additional heads to different countries. That's great. If we have access, let's share it. But we don't have access is the problem. We here in the United States are suffering when we go to the grocery store by the product either not being there because they can't process it or the price is skyrocketing. And how is that going to work? All of these people are out of work, right? So when you're out of work, you don't have money. Yes, you can get unemployment because it's not your fault that you're out of work, but that has to cover bills. It has to cover mortgage, car payments, utility bills, cell phone bills, all of that stuff. People don't have the money to be able to pay for skyrocketing prices from lack of production. And then we have the aspect of these people are sick and they're handling our food. Yes, it's being cooked. Yes, the heat should kill it. But do we know that for sure? We don't know that for sure. Maybe heat doesn't kill it. There are some things that heat doesn't kill. Some bacteria, some viruses, some, some, um, all sorts of different things that heat just doesn't kill. Okay. Um, so it makes me a little nervous because these people are sick and they're handling our food supply <clears throat> and then we're bringing it into our home. So we have that entire aspect to think about as well. And I told Brian this the other day, I was like, block me off a section <laughs> in the backyard. I don't care what the neighbors say. We're going to get some chickens and we're going to get some pigs and I know how to, to slaughter stuff. So I'll just do it myself. Like, then I know what I'm consuming, what my family's consuming is safe. And I feel like a lot of people are going to start doing that because I know I'm not the only one who's sitting here going, this is messed up, right? 
and even the plants that are open that have individuals in there working, they're staying open even when individuals are leaving sick because they have this CV or whatever. They've already infected the entire plant at that point in time, yet you're continuing production and you're sanitizing when you can, but you have open meat uh, all over the place. So, food for thought. I say we, we grow our own food, we kill our own food, and uh, we start being more independent and stop relying on everything else because it's not going to be there. We, we need to be prepared for that. It's just not going to be there. Um, as it's looking a lot of the states that, you know, are opening are going to just shut back down again. I saw a um, report that they opened some of the beaches in Florida under restrictions, right? You're not supposed to be within uh, six feet of other individuals and you can't be in groups larger than 10. And they even said when they set out these guidelines, listen, if you're not going to adhere by those, we'll shut the beaches right back down again. Hundreds of people all next to each other. You know the cops are going to be reporting that. You know the cops are there watching people. I don't understand why people just can't get it together. Because guess what? Now they're going to shut down the beaches. You're going to hear that in the news. Um, that they're going to shut the beaches back down because people can't adhere to the guidelines. Now, do I agree with the guidelines? No. And I want to do a live stream tonight. And I think that's what we need to talk about. Um, I, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it at 7 or 8. I will uh, figure that out and let you guys know. But uh, that's what we need to talk about. We need to talk about these guidelines and these governors and these states. And um, what we need to do as the public to take back our freedom. Because it's being stripped away from us more and more every single day so it'll be a good talk and we'll do that tonight but keep this in mind with the meat because no boy no man all right that's all i've got for you guys um as always everything happens for a reason whether you're having a good day or a bad day stick with it you're gonna be all right make the best of your situation enjoy your family Enjoy your animals if you have them. Just enjoy life and uh, don't gripe about stuff. Don't be negative. Be positive. Spread love and happiness and joy. And I will catch you guys on the flip side.